Thank you, Jackie. Um, this afternoon, I thought we'd look at the topic of endurance. Now, this was the topic that was given to me when I had to go and speak to some ladies down in Karnataka. And I thought, let's con let, let me just bring a gist of um, what I'd spoken there because it was such a challenge to me. And um, I hope it speaks into each one of our hearts today because we are not called for a life that is full of roses. We are not called for a life that is um, without troubles and trials. Somehow each one of us, we do go through these hard times, those times of difficulty that you just want to get out and run away from. But no, we are called to endure those days, endure that time. And we're going to look at what is endurance, moving on to why do we need to endure as Christians? And to finish off, I have seven points to say, how should we endure in our Christian life? Okay, so what is endurance? Now I got a couple of meanings that said, Suffer patiently. And that's what our portion starts off also with. Suffering patiently. The second one was quite vague. And, you know, it wasn't very encouraging. It says, remain in existence or just last. We are not called to do that. We are called to exist or to last with a lot of different aspects that we're going to look at later this evening, uh, later in this time of our talk. But I like this definition that said, getting through a trial or life itself without compromising or wavering. And I think that's what we are called for. We are called to go through the trials in life, our hardships in life, and go through life itself without compromising or wavering. Now, when you look at the life of, let's say, um, Joni Erickson, you know, who's paralyzed neck down, and how she had to go through life year after year after year for so many years, how was she able to do it? How was she able to be cheerful? How was Nick able, able without his limbs be an encouragement to the whole world? We see even youngsters who pick on his messages and are amazed at how, his, how he has done it. We think of David Ritchie who has no arms. And he talks about his own life and he says, it's not the lack of my arms and legs that was a problem. But the problem was how people looked at me and how people treated me. Like if he would go to a restaurant and use his feet to feed himself, he's even been sent out of certain restaurants because he was not, that he that he didn't want to do, I mean, that he was feeding himself with his feet and it was not an... Uh, a, a interesting sight for anyone or it wasn't a sympathetic sight or acceptable sight and that caused him pain and suffering not only having to learn all this but to actually live through it so why do we as Christians need to suffer and I'm going to dig into a few passages into God's word to tell us and like Mr. Dennis reminded us, it's always better to go back to God's word and build our thoughts on God's word. And so without um, much delay, uh, can I turn your attention to 1 Peter 2.21? And I'll try and read 1 Peter 2 verse 21. Um, yes. Um for to this you were called, 
because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his footsteps. Okay, so we are called. You are called because Christ also suffered for you. You are called to a life of suffering because that is the example that has been set out for us. So why do we suffer? Because it is our calling. We are not called to a life of ease and just comfort, but we are called to a life where we need to prove ourselves as God's children and prove ourselves as people who follow his example and people who want to uh, be a witness for the others. Um, i just like to um, tell you one little point here and then we'll quickly go on. Um, I remember when I was in school a few years ago at Hebron School and um, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Reed was sitting with me. Ross and myself, we were just sitting outside the office on the bench and having a little chat. And up in front walked her son and her son was in a cast in his arms, uh, with his arms in a cast. And a few minutes later, my son walked across the, just in front of us. And he had a cast on his arm and he had his leg in a bandage. And um, Mrs. Reed just looked at me and said, Shiva, just because we are Christians and because we are God's children, he doesn't spread a blanket underneath when our children fall, do they? Does he? And yes, that was a lesson. God protects us, but then we have to go through what, um, what everybody else goes through. Our children fall, they break their bones, they have to go through the pain. And they had to get better. And uh, so it is a, we are called to a life of, of suffering. I hope that didn't go outside the point, but it reminded us that God does care for us, but we are people of the world. Then um, can I um, turn your attention to Matthew 7, 14? Matthew chapter 7, verse 14, that says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few who find it. So narrow is the way. And the narrower the way, the greater the struggle. We know that. When you have to crush yourself and squeeze yourself and go through a path, it is difficult. And so times of trial are difficult. And I like to go into my third point that says, uh, in Genesis 3, 17, um, Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 17, that says, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat. Thirst is the ground for you, for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. We live in a sin-cursed earth. That is the earth we have. God was not happy with Adam and Eve for what they did. And that is the punishment we bear. So we live in a sin-cursed earth. And the curse is still there. But the Lord sustains us through it. And I love this verse in John 16, 33 that says, John 16, 33, um, that says, These things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have peace in this world. You will have tribulations. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He says, there will be tribulations. You will go tri through trials and temptations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Isn't that a consolation? It is such peace to the heart to know that the Lord is there with us, that God is there with us. And he says, be of good cheer, I have overcome this world. Doesn't matter if it curses. Doesn't matter whatever happens. Everything is there, but God is a victor. 
but we still have to go through all the things that uh, that are there in this life for us. Philippians 3.10 says, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. And that just reminds me, being conformed to his death and to be partake of his, of his suffering, it means all that is going to change me. We're called to, to bear through all this suffering because the Lord went through it, because my God has gone through it. Nothing is new to him. He has gone through every suffering that we have gone through. He has tasted everything for us. And so he says only by going through this suffering can we become more like him. We just sang that song, make me holy for you. And if that is going to be our prayer, as Jackie said, remember it comes with suffering. It comes with troubles. It comes with hard times. That's the only way God changes us. He uses other ways. But this is the most effective way that he can use in our life to change us. Can we just look back at our own lives? Isn't it because of all that has happened in our life that we have become gentler, we become kinder, we become more empathetic, we have become more reliant on God, uh, we we don't think too much about ourselves. Pride is uh, has taken a back seat in our lives because of trials and temptations. And if that wasn't there, we would be such haughty and arrogant people. And that's what I think about myself. I'm not condemning you, but I'm just saying that we are changed because of the trials that have come into our life. And in 1 Peter 2.21, which we already read, read, he says, he leaves us as an example. So we have trials because we need to be examples. We need to set the ground for the people to follow. Right. So today we're going to look at, at, the, at how should we endure. Okay. We have been called to a life of suffering. We want to change to be more like him. And the way that we need to be changed is to endure all the hardships that God has given us and to go through it with his help. But what should our attitude be? And I've got seven quick points to go through in the next few minutes, in the next 15 minutes. I would like to go through seven points and it's all taken from the, from the book of James, chapter five, the writing of James. And it's from verse 5 right through to, um, I'm sorry, it's verse from verse 7 right through to verse 13. And our first point, I'm just going to read verse 7. It says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. Yes, my brother-in-law did farming. And often I would ask him, how long would it take till the next harvest? When will you get the money that you have invested into that land with these crops? And it's always three months. And he says, no, they're just the planters come. Now the carrots will have And he had to wait. And in that year, if the if the rain fails, the crops have failed and he's lost everything. And so anyone who's in cultivation or in, you know, who's being a farmer will know that things have to happen at the right time. That the rain has to come in its time. The sunshine has to come in its own, in its right time. And then with the rain and the sunshine and every other climatic conditions, the crop grows to its full. And so also in our lives, we need our time of sunshine. We go through rain. 
And we go through all this to be seasoned and to come out like Christ. But are we going to go through it without patience? Sometimes it can take a few months for us to change our attitude, which God wants changed. Sometimes it can just take a couple of days, but sometimes it takes a longer time and we have to go through whatever the Lord has allowed us as long as he has allowed it, as long as we are going through that problem, if we go through it patiently, you will be a witness. I will be a witness. We will be speaking to the outside world because we have been patient. It's very difficult to have patience. But if you are patient, you are conforming to Christ's ways. Not only that, you are also fulfilling the command of God to be a testimony for him. When you patiently endure what the Lord has allowed in your life. I want to go into the second point, which is in verse 9. It says, I'm just going to read that. And it says, do verse 8, which says, you also be patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Establish your heart. It means set your heart, of, your heart on Jesus. Set your heart towards God. Let it be fixed there. Let it be established there. Don't let it waver around. Don't look at the circumstances. We know when Peter walked on the water, he had his eyes on Jesus and he was able to go forward. But the moment he looked at his problem of the water and the waves and everything around him, he started to sink. My dear friends, if we look at our problems, the problems are going to overtake us. If we look at our difficulties, it's going to overtake us. But when you set your eyes on the Lord, you will see the beautiful attributes of the Lord that will sustain you through these problems and that will take you through. Set your eyes on Jesus. Establish your heart on Jesus. Let your priorities be put right. Let your heart anchor on to the Lord so that your heart will not waver with the wind and the rain and everything that comes through but that you would be able to go forward with the help of the Lord. Because he's not going to leave us here for long. He's going to come and take us. It says in this verse, the coming of the Lord is at hand. Isn't that a consolation? It's such a comfort to know that the Lord is at hand. He's going to come back for us. He's going to take us to be with him in his house. He's preparing a mansion for me. He's preparing a place where the roads are paved of gold, where his presence is going to be the light and the beauty of that place. It's going to be a place where we are going to worship him and keep praising him. And that's what he has prepared for us. So endure it, keeping your eyes on Jesus. Endure it with patience. And we go on to the next verse. Verse 9 that says, do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you, you be condemned. And most times that is so true of us. We just want to grumble about everything that's come up in our life. Grumble about even the tiniest problem. And we want to grumble. That's a lesson I'm learning, not to keep talking about my problems to a lot of people just keep it to yourself or just share it with the lord just share it with one or two people uh, and that's a lesson i am slowly learning because i know there are times when i've spoken about something and my children would turn around and tell me mama that was quite unnecessary you you shouldn't really have spoken that or do you think that has encouraged them by saying that yes when we grumble when we're not happy in our own blessings that the Lord has given us, 
And when you just pick on the darker side, when you pick on those troubles and trials and magnify that and uh, talk about it uh, to everyone and, uh, you know, you're not set, we're not setting a right example, are we? So the Bible reminds us that we are not to grumble to one another. And he says that too, lest you be condemned because they were unnecessary words and we didn't really have to talk about it. So we don't want to be condemned. So let's not grumble, right? So that is my third point. Be patient, establish your heart, do not grumble. And let's look at verse, the fourth point that is in verse 10. And it says, my brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Yes. When we are going through trials and temptation, look at the others. People have set up people in the Bible whom we can look through and be encouraged. God has set up people, I quoted three of them, who are people of the present world, who are going through much more than we can. We have our arms and legs. We are intact. And, and yet we grumble. So look at these examples and be encouraged. There are people who have gone through so much for the Lord. People who have lost everything for the Lord. People who have lost family members for God. And they still keep marching on to live a life that pleases him. And keep their eyes on the Lord. What are we doing? I'm asking myself the question, why, why don't I just look at all these people and be encouraged by them and say, yes, the Lord is there to take care of everything. I will keep doing what God has called me to do and do it faithfully. And we know that there are so many people in the Bible who have suffered so much and yet have stood up for Christ. Joseph in the J in the in prison. Even there, he was a testimony for God. Daniel, when it meant death, he stood up for God. He kept what he did to please God and to keep on going. So let's look at these examples, and that's what the word of God tells us to do. Look, look for examples that the Lord has kept so that we will be encouraged and know that God's blessing has been great in our life. Let's go on to verse 11. Verse 11 says, Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Jacob and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is compassionate and merciful. So here we see that Job, in spite of all his trials, although everything was taken away from him, although everything was ripped off him literally, he was steadfast in his faith. He had friends to discourage him. He had people to put him down, to put his God down. And yet he said, no, that he is going to live for that God. He is still going to trust on him. He is still going to hold on to that faith that was put into him or that relationship that he had with his God. When we endure hardship, be steadfast. Keep going one step at a time. Looking to God for the next step. Moving through your problems. It doesn't have to be fast, but be steadfast. It doesn't have to be a thing that you can rush through, even if it takes all your energy and your thought. Draw the, the energy and the strength that you have from God, that God has for you and keep marching through. Keep steadfast. Keep going. Keep moving. And that's what we can learn from Job 
because he persevered. We need to keep persevering. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus and keep persevering and going ahead so that we will be a testimony for God, that we will please him and we will give him a chance to change our life. Verse 12, and that's my sixth point. Verse 12 says, But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. Yes, do it truthfully. Let your yes be yes and a no be no. When you go through trials and temptations, when you go through problems, when you go through hardships, be truthful. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Because if not, this verse warns us, you will fall into judgment. And that's a profound truth there. We can beat around the bush. It doesn't help. And there are people who say, we only said a white lie or, you know, whatever. It, it, I didn't tell a lie, but made the other person understand the wrong thing. No. The Bible says very clearly, let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Whatever time of life you're passing through. Do go endure truthfully. Endure steadfastly. Endure looking at examples. Endure without grumbling. Endure establishing your heart on Christ. And endure patiently. And we go to the last point. In verse 13. It says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. So whether you're cheerful or whether you're suffering, you need to pray, you need to sing praises to God. Even if you say, I don't have a good voice, it doesn't matter. Because you can bring your praises to God. Your heart can be praising. But as we heard this morning, uh, this um, a little while ago, in the song that Colin sang, he said, teach me to pray. Yes. We want the Lord to teach us how to pray when we're going through those difficult circumstances. Do we have to pray for a person? Do we have to pray for uh, the situation? Lord, teach me. Give me your wisdom to pray. And I just want to um, finish in the next minute by just saying that once when I was going through difficulty, great difficulty, the Lord told me, pray for that person. It was very difficult to pray for that person. But the end result was beautiful. I do not have time to illustrate that whole incident, but I just want to say that there was a change both in that person and in my own life. And the lesson that God taught me was no person or no situation is put into your life without a purpose. And that pur purpose is either to change you or to change someone who's looking at you, who's watching you. And that's the testimony that we show out to the others. No situation has been put in your life. And these were words that God spoke to me. No situation has been put into your life without a reason. The reason is either to change you or to change someone who's watching you. And in conclusion, I just want to say, when you endure, endure verse 11 says, you are blessed. We count them blessed who endure. We are a group of blessed people because we are going to endure for Christ. We are going to go through life with his help, being blessed by him. And I would like you to look at um, um, this verse that is verse 11 that says, through it all, Job found out that the Lord was compassionate and merciful. 
And through our experience, we know that he's compassionate, he's merciful, he's loving, he's kind, he's an ever-present help. So do not be afraid to stand up for God, to endure hardships for Christ. Do not be afraid when you go through your trial. The Lord is holding you. The Lord is guiding you. He is holding you in the hollow of your of his hands. You are precious to him. Thank you for listening. But just before that, I just want to tell you, I'm going to post a song that says, if this God has helped people out through ages, he will definitely help us today. And it's a song called, a song which is called Firm, Firm Foundation, He Won't. And I'll just post it on the group so that you can listen to it and be encouraged. It was too long and I couldn't put it on into the program, but you can listen to it at your leisure. Thank you so much and have a wonderful and a blessed week. Thank you.